Mode seemed to be the entry point for a lot of people to begin thinking about music theory as a practical tool, rather than the most boring part of your piano lessons. While this ends up with modes getting a lot more attention from, say, music theory YouTube videos than other, more practical topics, I think that modes are exciting, and a great way to introduce people to thinking theoretically about music. Today we're going to look at one of the least useful and most stereotyped modes, the Locrian mode, and see how it's actually used in video game music and the different colors composers can ring out of it. The Locrian mode is a minor scale where the second and fifth degrees of the scale are flattened. It's often stereotyped as the evil sounding one, as the flat second and flat fifth are two of the most dissonant notes that you can place against a root note. If you were to build a characteristic chord out of the Locrian scale, it would be a half diminished chord, with the root, the flat third, the flat fifth, and the flat seventh. The flat seventh, rather than the double flat seventh, or major seventh, is what distinguishes the Locrian sound from a fully diminished scale sound. The two sound similar for sure, but they have very different practical uses, and we tend to hear just a diminished triad as implying a fully diminished sound. Locrian's in kind of an odd spot actually because it gets pigeonholed as the super dark, super unstable mode, but if you want to write really dark and unstable sounding music, there are better, spookier ways to do it than working out of the Locrian mode, so the Locrian mode doesn't actually see much use. <laughs> At Doom's Gate, from the original Doom, shows us a perfect example of this. The main guitar riff takes a walk down the Locrian scale from the root E to its flat fifth, B flat, and fills in the space between each note with chugging low E's. There is a natural fifth in this riff, true, but it quickly resolves up to the flat sixth, C, so I'm tempted to call it a chromatic approach note and not really count it. Either way, the phrase ends with a big fat tritone between the root and the flat fifth and draws out the general character of the Locrian sound. Sounds pretty badass, right? This same riff is moved around to different chords as the piece goes on, first up to the 4 chord and back, and then over this turnaround that uses a C-sharp Locrian scale followed by a B Locrian scale. This is an example of using different chords, each built from their own respective Locrian sound, instead of drawing a whole progression out of one single scale, which is an approach I'll talk about more in a future video. But when the going gets tough, and it's time to really kick things up a notch, the music totally abandons the Locrian mode and ramps up the dissonance through other, more effective means. The main guitar riff is harmonized with natural ninths, raised sevenths, flat sevenths, and double flat sevenths at will just to make sure every note in the riff feels as gross and dissonant as possible. Going against your expectations as a listener is a big part of what makes music dissonant. And if you're going for dissonance, then sticking strictly to one scale throughout your piece doesn't make all that much sense. Taking things out of the Locrian mode and into darker, more sinister harmonic places evokes the hellish sound required for a game about shooting demons in the face. For the purists out there, the Doom 2016 version of this track features a riff toward the end that does purely use the Locrian scale, this time in the key of D. I would say this riff feels the way we typically expect the Locrian scale to sound. Dark, heavy, brooding, evil. <laughs> but there are some surprising examples of the Locrian mode used for effects that aren't so creepy or intense, while still maintaining the edge that's characteristic of the scale.
The Mines of Narsh from Final Fantasy VI opens with an entire section built from the B Locrian scale over top of a constant B bass pedal. Trying to make a half-diminished chord feel like the home base of a key is exceedingly difficult thanks to the inherent instability of the chord. So to combat this, you'll often hear composers use a bass pedal throughout their piece to anchor it clearly within the desired mode. You can't hear the music as being in another key if the bass is hammering home the tonic the entire time, after all. Uematsu lets us live in this mode for an extended period of time right off the bat, with crunchy chord voicings in the strings giving us different permutations of a B half diminished chord over top of the held bass note, even outlining a flat ninth over top for that extra Locrian crunch. The melody then comes in in the upright bass, alternating phrases that end on the root and flat fifth of the B Locrian scale to drive home the sound of the mode. This vibe is nothing like our example from Doom, and probably nothing like what you would envision when you think of the Locrian sound. The dark, dissonant quality of the mode is still there, but it's leveraged into this kind of film noir detective sound that gives a sense of suspense and dreariness to the music. It's a very cool atmosphere, although, as a jazz musician myself, I do have to disavow these snaps on beats 1 and 3. Jazz boy, open up! When your tonic chord is so unstable, it seems impossible to create a real sense of tension and release without leaving the scale you're in. If you move to another chord in the key, that chord will inevitably feel like the resolution point, since it's so much less dissonant than the chord you're moving from. How do you resolve to a chord that feels inherently unresolved? The Final Fantasy example got around this by not leaving the home chord at all, allowing us to just sit and stew in its atmosphere. But our final example does the impossible and creates a sense of tension and release inside a Locrian framework through melodic resolutions. It also manages to create another completely different vibe with the same scale. I'm talking about the Samasa Desert theme from The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. <laughs> Harmonically, we stick to the E Locrian scale with what seems like just one step more complicated than a straight held bass note. The bass here moves back and forth between the root and the flat seventh in this repeating two bar pattern. The movement from D to E feels like a resolution from the flat seventh to the root, laying a foundation that grounds the piece with E as its tonic. The melody above spells out an E Locrian sound, but trades a couple phrases that emphasize different parts of the scale. First, rather than a normal E half diminished chord, this melody outlines an E half diminished sus4 flat 9 chord with the notes E, F, A, B flat, and D. These are all pulled from the Locrian scale, but it's a much crunchier, more colorful chord than your go to E half diminished. Note the way the phrase lands on and emphasizes the F, the flat second over top of the E root note, before working its way back up to start the next phrase. Despite this flat second, it doesn't sound all that dissonant, evoking an arid desert vibe rather than a gates of hell kind of thing. I think this is because the melody is moved so high up above the bass that the crunch between the flat second and flat fifth against the root is lessened. We're getting all of that Locrian color without the headache. Anyway, this phrase is answered by a slight variation, where, rather than emphasizing the flat second, F, the melody uses F as a way to resolve down to the root E, in the same emphasized place in the bar. Landing first on the flat second, and then on the root, gives us a little push and pull, a little sense of tension and then release, without ever leaving the E Locrian scale, or really the tonic E Locrian chord. The 
The tune doesn't feel all that dark or sinister, especially compared to our previous examples, but we definitely get the color and the edge of the Locrian mode here within a diatonic functional framework. It's like that sushi dish that's made out of a poisonous fish, but if you make it right, it tastes great. I only know about that from The Simpsons, I don't know if that's even real. Anyways, it's an incredible sound that's nothing like what we typically hear in video game music. Hopefully this dispelled some of your idiotic preconceived notions about what the Locrian scale can and can't do. You're welcome! <laughs> no, uh, if you'd like to hear me talk about the other modes, let me know in the comments below. I definitely want to make one more video on the Lydian scale, but I don't need to talk about all of the other modes if you guys are sick of hearing about them. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the video. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.